this computer. Okay, great. So let's start at the beginning. Where and when were each of you born? I was born in Dallas, Texas. When? And I was, I was born in Chicago, Illinois. I, I grew up in the Bay Area, though. Uh -huh. and, and, and I grew up in Seattle. Campbell, near the Bay Area. Well, in the Bay Area, yeah. And month and date, because I'm interested in your astrological signs, too. Oh, okay. Oh. October 9th, 1972. I'm a Libra. Libra. And I'm a Capricorn, uh, January 4th, 1956. All right. Um, so air and earth maybe kind of balance each other out. Libras are about harmony and seeing both sides of the issue. And Capricorns are about moving <laughs> forward, getting things done. Is that accurate or not? That's pretty oh, accurate. That's completely accurate about me. <laughs> and and we totally balance each other out. Yeah, we do. Um, he has no sense of time. Yeah, he has no sense of time, and I have no sense of direction. Oh, oh. that the it kind you of you were frozen for a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Casey doesn't have a sense of time, and you don't have a sense of direction. So you get each other to places on time. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, okay. we do. Um, what about Actually, your it's Tony that doesn't have time. I, I and I don't have any sense of direction, but and this is why I drive all the time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Perfect. Um, what about your education and career paths? What kind of work school have you done? So I have a bachelor bachelor's degree uh, in psychology, minor in art. Uh, I work in Lead. You work in what? Pardon? Uh, financial aid at Chico State. Okay. And um, what about? For about 15 years. Okay. And I, I'm retired. I was an IT guy. Pretty much uh, worked most of my career in uh, data storage, data security. And then my last um, job was with pg and &E. mm -hmm. And what are you doing now that you have more time to do what you really want to do? <laughs> I'm not doing anything. He doesn't do anything. I'm what retired. Does what does that mean? I mean, I, I guess I, golf he, or something. Cook? I'm retired. <laughs> I'm retired. pg and &E offered me an early out and I took it. So what's a typical day for you? Oh man, um, you know, just doing chores around the house. Yeah. Or I'll take Casey to work and you know, hang out town day. And he's very social, so like I'm pretty social. He he goes to different hangouts, you know, different bars and whatnot. By himself. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but he meets his people. I've got a bunch there. of veterans that I hang around with, and yeah. they're, they're all um, at Nash's, mm. so I meet up with them during the week, and um, I'm a veteran, so it's, mm. it's a good thing. Mm. May I ask where you were on tour, where you were stationed? In Germany. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? <clears throat> I was in Grafenbeer, Germany right yep mm -hmm. and what about you two how did you meet and what did you first think when you met each other um it was kind of love at first sight I, we met online you know like everybody else uh we met on uh yahoo personals which no longer exists it, it, it got absorbed by match.com but um and then we met in person at uh, Outback. Outback. <laughs> what is that? It's a restaurant. Out, out, Outback Steakhouse. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which is, no longer exists in Chico, unfortunately. But Yeah. And how did that go, that first meeting? Very well. He came home with me. <laughs> 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 and... Um, what, what, what attracted you to about each other as, as a person? 
Well, um, so uh, Tony was, I was just coming out when I met Tony and he was the first person that was actually interested in me um, that I, that I dated. Um, and I lost, I lost my late partner. Um, also, he, he had been through leukemia and had a, um, had a relapse in the hospital, misdiagnosed him and didn't do the right thing. So, but yeah, but I, I didn't go out for, I didn't look for anybody for three years. And then I, I met Tony and he kind of swept me off my feet because <laughs> he smelled good and he dressed good and he has a nice <laughs> house or, you know, which is our house now, but yeah, he, yeah. he's just kind of wonderful. And everyone has a coming out story. What, what are your coming out stories? So I came out kind of late in life. I was, I think, 35. Um, and I just sort of realized, you know, so I, I grew up in the Bay Area and it was like the worst thing ever to, to be gay. Um, and so I, I sort of internalized that for a long time. And then when I, uh, I finally had my own house and I was doing well and I, I just sort of realized like, I, I need to just, you know, get over it and come out. And, and that's when I met Tony and, and I wanted to have a relationship with him. And so, you know, that's sort of my coming out story. And, and for me, I, um, I came out when I was, oh, geez, 30 is when I came out and, um, I mean, to my family and everything. And that's when I met Chris, who uh, is my late partner. And um, that's, that's pretty much when I came out. And tell her what your aunt said when she was in the hospital. What'd she say? Um, uh, I don't remember. It was like, did, she said, like, did you get a shot for it or something? Or, or... Oh, I don't remember that. Okay. <laughs> so did you both um, date women in your 20s? I was married actually to a woman and we got divorced. <laughs> and why did you get divorced? Uh, lack of compassion. Oh, you're frozen. Yeah. So you said lack of passion? Yeah, I mean, I I, I didn't even come out even then. Uh, uh, you know, she, she just lost interest in it. obviously, um, and just, it will, you know, we, we just, we were good friends, but, uh, there, there just wasn't a, a good connection, you know, because I'm gay and, and I came out to her later. Um, you know, I, I apologize for, you know, yeah, I mean, sorry. Um, yeah, it's one of my biggest regrets getting married to her and, and you know, wasting, I mean, wasting a couple of years of her life. I mean, I don't know if that even makes sense, but you know, I, I just feel bad for, for that. Um, but you know, we, we had a good relationship besides, you know, not connecting sexually, obviously. Mm -hmm. Did you have kids? No, thank thank goodness <laughs> no kids no property the divorce was super easy breezy like you know mm -hmm. um what about you tony did you what was your experience dating women if you did 
I did date women and I had a close relationship when I was living in the Bay Area. And uh, it, it, we actually got engaged, but we never got married. And then I moved down to San Diego and that's pretty much when I started coming out. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's easier for young, younger men than you are now in terms of, you, you were really inhibited in terms of your expression of who you were. Do you think that's changed? I, I think it has, I hope it has. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not younger, but uh, you know, I, I think that society is definitely more open now. Um, so yeah, I, well, I think it's a lot easier to, to come out. What do you see, you interact with college students every day as part of your job. What, what, what do you see in terms of um, how their, this generation um, Z is different if they are in terms of their approach to life in general? I, I, I've noticed a lot more openness you know, even when I was in my 30s, um, you know, the, the millennials, I, I remember when, when I was early in my career, I was talking to somebody and I, I said something about, you know, being gay and I, I wasn't even out yet. And, and the, the student said like, there's nothing wrong with being gay. You know, and he said that with without even hesitation. So, yeah, I I think that things are are progressing very well, and I agree. Yeah, and and I'm I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I agree. It, I think that's a characteristic of Generation Y and Zs. They're really comfortable with diversity. They don't need cookie cutter, and, and yeah, I, yeah. They don't like labels. So I, I read that a third, around a third of American teens are LGBTQI questioning. They're, they're, they're not certain that they're cis man or cis woman. Well, right. Do you think that's right. because it's cool to be questioning or just that people who couldn't come out before now there's the permission to come out? Or what do you think, why a third? I, 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 it's still, well, in Chico, for sure, it's still definitely not cool. Um, I, I think people are just more open and, and more, yeah. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of homophobic, I'm, I'm very vocal on Facebook. And so I get a lot of backlash and, I've been shown that it's definitely not cool to be gay. <laughs> the interesting thing to me is that right wing conservatives, their latest is anti trans, not giving trans kids the chance to have um, hormone blockers or that kind of thing, like in Alabama. And it, it seems. Yeah. Why are they so concerned? I mean, and the, the bathroom thing, who uses what bathroom? I, I don't understand why it's such a big issue, political issue. I don't get it either. Yeah, I don't get it either. But I'm, I'm happy about seeing all gender bathrooms around town now. No, I'm, I'm very happy about that. Yeah. And what I was, I was um, on the board of directors at Stonewall here in Chico. And um, I'd been on the board for many years. And for me, just being out or being out or whatever. Yep. <laughs> Come on, Zoom. Um, so you do do other things besides hang out with your buddies, Tony? I oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, of, I course. Mean... of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I need something to do, though. I want, I yeah. want to actually want to go back to work, so. But, you know, he does a lot of stuff around the house. And... Yeah. You have now, we, live on three, we live on three acres up in the Butte Creek Canyon on the creek. So mm -hmm. I got plenty of work. All right. Do you have pets? 
we were affected by the fire. We lost, we lost our one bedroom cottage, my workshop, my pump house, and, but the house was okay. We lived in the hotel for six months. Yeah, we did. And we do have, I think you asked if we had a pet. We have a, we have a golden retriever named JJ and he's the best. Yeah, he's the best. He's kind of like your kid. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. he's so our kid. Yeah. Um, how, how were they able to save your house, but not the other buildings? No so idea. the fire came up the canyon and the, on Centerville Road, the 10 houses before us, including my cottage, uh, all burned. And then beyond our house, we're the first house on our little road, Quail Run, and um, all the houses beyond us are all okay. The, the firefighters must have been here because they had to be. It came within two feet of the house and we got pretty bad smoke damage. Which is why we had to leave, live in a hotel for six months, but. Hmm. So you that must have been a test of the relationship to be in such close quarters for so long. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. But you know what? We powered through. What what got you through? Uh, each other. He's he's an awesome guy. Oh. No. Uh, when, he's awesome. What what made you decide to get married? When did you do it? And what kind of ceremony did you have? So we got married at the Chico Women's Club, and we decided to get married because, you know, when one of us passes, like we just want it to be easy, you know, for us to pass on our, our wealth or, you know, whatever our, you know, oh, sorry. Oh, are you still there? I am. Okay. <laughs> I, I almost dropped the phone. So, yeah, you know, and also, you know, Tony is retired and, and I wanted him to be on my insurance because I work for Chico State. And so, yeah, we, we just. It all worked out. Yeah. You now, kinda... we, we got married about five years ago in um, July yep. at the Women's As... Club, like AC said. And that's actually where we I proposed to him when he was doing a fundraiser because he was raising money for AIDS life cycle. So I had a big fundraising party and and. We invited all of our friends, and like so everybody was there. Two hundred people. Yeah, and that's how many. People, that's how many people we had at our wedding too. Wow! Oh, so there were two hundred people at the fundraiser. You proposed, and then later, you did. You were at the women's club again. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I saw a picture on Facebook. You were pretty casual in shorts, and looked like people were having a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Has it made a difference being married? Not really. I mean, we're super close. You know, yeah. I mean, we've been together for 12 years. We got married five years ago. So, I mean, it makes a difference legally, but like personally, no. Um, how do you divide? Um, cooking, cleaning, bill playing, the kind of roommate issues that people have in a, in a cis marriage, there's kind of an inclination. He carries mm -hmm. out the trash, he mows the lawn, she's responsible for social events. Right. So now, I, I pretty much pay the, the mortgage and the bills. Yeah, we, we have our own. Pays PG &E. I pay, yeah, I pay the electric bill. Um, I do all, all of the cooking because lately, <laughs> I'm the better cook, and and Whatever. I do all, and I do all the dishes because he doesn't do them right. <laughs> <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> oh, you've got to do the dishes because I don't do them right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's an old ploy. <laughs> you I do know, right? so much better. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Um, no, but we have we have we have a very amicable relationship, and we take care of our business. Yeah. Well, every couple that isn't perfect, which none of us are, I'm assuming has some kind of conflicts or disagreements where they have to grow a little bit. I think of it like 
erasing the bumps that you have to smooth out <laughs> through this interaction? What are your interactions that, that cause growth? <laughs> I've, I've learned to pick my battles. I used to be a delicate little flower. Well, yeah, I, I you know, I, we used to fight quite a bit. Um, in the beginning. In the beginning. But, you know, like I said, it, you have to pick your battles. And what did you, and, what, were the, what were the fights about? So, like Tony said, I'm, I'm a delicate little flower, and he's, I say this lovingly, he's an asshole, but, but <laughs> you know, like, but. No, we just, we just needed to figure it out. Yeah. Figure and out so, what? Because I mean, that's we're, what we're, people can learn from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, we um, we we got it figured out. I used to get pissed off at every little thing, and and now I just don't. Cause why? Yeah, it's not worth it. Um, if you do have something where you don't agree, how? What's your conflict resolution system? Like some people say, well, don't go to bed angry, or. Other people say, well, go take a walk and cool off or whatever. So if there is a disagreement, how do you work it through? We just talk about it. Yeah, we talk about it. We don't go to bed angry. Um, we're, we're pretty good about this. Yeah. We pretty much just don't get angry. I mean. Yeah. Well, so and in the beginning, what were some of the things that were irritants? Um, I don't know. I, I think I had expectations that weren't exactly realistic and, um, being in a relationship that, uh, I, I just had a lot of feelings that were unexpected and, you know, I, I used to say to to some of my friends, like I felt like a 15, 15 year old girl, um, not just like I was super emotional about stuff. And he's not that much anymore. And yeah, I just got over it, you know. It kind of makes sense if you had to repress certain feelings for, for so long that it, that when you had a chance yeah. to express them, it would it would be a little bit raw. Yeah, he was the first person that I really, really cared about, you know, and so it brought out a lot of stuff that was unexpected. Like fear of abandonment, fear of... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> He's going to leave me because I... whatever. Hmm. Yep. So you're, you, it sounds like you, you just let time develop trust between... Right. You. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm. Exactly. For real. In in the old days, <clears throat> for lesbian and gay men relationships, there were kind of roles. Like there were lipstick lesbians and dykes on bikes, and there were men in leather and men who wore, I don't know, eyeshadow or something. So do you do you think that's changed in terms of thinking of people in those kind of imposing those traditional roles? I, I think so. I mean, we don't have roles like that. I mean, we're both pretty masculine men. Um, so, you know, there's <laughs> mom and we're both guys and that's the point. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, we're both pretty masculine. You're, you're, it's skipped. You're both you're both guys. You're both uh, masculine. Ah, uh, okay. You know, you know, neither neither one of us is femme, and and that's part of why I'm attracted to him because I like guys. You know, so yeah. What 
Tony, what was it like in the military? Um, was was that awkward or not being in with all men? Well, you know, um, it, was, it was, you know, I found relationships while I was in the military and um, that worked out fine. And I still got long-term uh, friendships from people that I was friends with in the military, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, but I, di I didn't have a problem being myself. It was, um, it was different, but you know, I learned to figure it out. But you couldn't be out, correct? No, 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 no. I couldn't be out. Right. I couldn't be out. Um, it seems like in, in our intimate relationships, they're really often a reaction to, or a repetition of our parents' marriage relationship. <clears throat> so I wondered what you see in terms of your programming as kids and how that <clears throat> influenced your choice of each other and how you interact. My parents got divorced when I was eight years old. So our, our marriage is nothing like that. Um, except for my parents always got along, you know, in front of me and my brother but you know they they got divorced and and i am i will never divorce tony i mean i'm i'm in it uh yeah i'm i'm in it too yeah <laughs> were you the um second boy tony yeah I oh, mean, no i was the oldest I was okay. the oldest out of four. Oh wow! And I, I was. The, I have an older brother. Right, right, right. Who was who was adopted actually? Because my parents uh, tried a bunch of times to have kids and couldn't, um, so they adopted my brother. And then surprise, <laughs> I came along. You hear about that all the time. They're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. relax. <laughs> they get a baby. Yep. Um, yep. And yep. would was that. Did he know your brother from as, as soon as he was old enough to know that he was adopted? And they say, we picked you especially kind of a thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, he, he always knew it. And it, no, it wasn't, doesn't seem like it was an issue for him. Uh, yes and no. I mean, yeah, I mean, he kind of did have some issues with it he kind of isolates and um well it's just because he's weird but <laughs> that that's a separate issue but yeah you know <laughs> he 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 sort of did have an an issue with it um but he was never treated any different you know mm -hmm. and he's my brother 100 mm percent -hmm. and he's my brother-in-law Oh. Yep. Oh, and he loves Tony. No, I, I love him. Yeah, he's oh. a good guy. I mean, he he's just different. <laughs> um, what about you, Tony, your parents' relationship? So um, my dad passed away when he was 54. He had three rounds of um, cancer, and that's what he passed away from when he was 54. They actually got divorced at one point and then remarried um, shortly after. But, um, you know, I, I left home when I was 17. I got a job at the phone company and, you know, I, I had, I, I just started, I wanted to work. I wanted to be out of the house. And that was kind of my deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, how is your relationship similar to or different with with Casey from your from being with Chris. Oh man, I'm that's still yeah, that's a good question. Um, no, I'm still um, a family member of Chris's family, and I'm Uncle Tony to all of my nephews and niece, and um, it, and we have a great relationship. So yeah, why, that hasn't changed. 
Why did it end? Oh, Chris passed away. Chris passed away. Oh, that's right. Oh, that did that does tend to end the relationship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was just surprised. I was working down in the Bay Area, and his mom called me, and he had gone to the doctor, and they sent him home with flu meds to his mom's house, and then um, this is hard. Yeah, um, she found him in the bathroom the next morning. And he was gone. I feel so. Yeah, this is definitely a hard question. I I feel terrible because the best thing that ever happened to me is because because Chris passed away. But you know, life happens. Yeah, and it was it was three years before I started even thinking about. Right. another right. relationship I, I just i thought i was done i thought i was done and so the family kept me together they helped me they were there and it was a beautiful thing it still is mm. it's, it's, they, thought I was, they thought i was a gold digger when i first met him <laughs> well some of them did mm. and other ones like oh like his mother-in-law was like can i feed you and give you wine and stuff oh i love you but <laughs> you know. what do you do for fun because masters and johnson said pair bonding is based on the shared memory of good times so when are your what do you do to create those good times well we try to get away i mean we just went away we love for, to travel we love to travel and so we yeah. actually this past week we went to um petaluma, petaluma. and yeah. casey's cousin lives there and i've got a couple of cousins there too that are on chris's side of the family so we were able to visit with them and it was very wonderful hmm. but it was just getting out hmm. what else do you do for fun besides eat out and travel i'm a i'm a big time cyclist and uh tony isn't into biking but it, it's kind of nice to have our our separate times because we do every absolutely everything else together so you know when i when i go on my bike adventures it's nice to have something to talk about that you know remember when we oh sorry are you that are you there okay there we go uh, um and when he does, when he does his life cycle, I'm a roadie. So I go with him. Yeah. So it's, life, it's, it's like seven days. Yeah. AIDS life cycle is a bike ride from San Francisco to LA that raises money for, for the San Francisco AIDS foundation and the LA LGBT center. Yep. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that, even though I, I'm not HIV positive, but, um, and nor am I. Yeah. And, but it's a great event and it was something that we could do together. Yeah. So we've got so many friends that do that ride and are roadies and we're close friends today. Yeah. And seeing the AIDS quilt and, uh, we, when we were in Key West, we saw the AIDS memorial. I mean, it just affected me so much that I just wanted to do something. Mm. Also, also, my stepdad uh, was a dentist, and he he closed his practice so he didn't have to see AIDS patients. Mm. And so I I do it for his karma <clears throat> you know <clears throat> that, that that's just one of the reasons but it's mostly because you know the aids quilt and and just seeing yeah. how, how many people aids has affected you know it, mm -hmm. it just I, I i wanted to do something mm -hmm. good um how do you keep from being bored spending so much time with each other for so many years Oh man, 
we're pretty social. Yeah. So we have a lot of great friends here in town and, you know, we make the rounds and, you know, of course, COVID has changed that a little bit. And I I never feel bored with him. It's, I mean, we've been together for 12 years or whatever, but it's, it still feels fresh and new. Yeah. Hmm. I feel this. It really does. I mean, I, I'm, I, I don't think I'll ever be bored with you. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> so do you learn new things about each other, about your character, personality? Is that part of it being new, as you said? All the time. All the time. Yeah. Yep. All the time. Hmm. Casey, you, that didn't sound, it was like, yeah, in terms of new things. Um, I feel like I know him like really, really well. So as far as new things, I mean, I hear new stories sometimes, but like, it's not like, it's not like, you know, he tells me anything that's like, surprising. What the fuck? You, you know, Damn. excuse my language, but you know, it's, it's not like that. I, I, I just adore him. <laughs> It's fabulous. Um, it, if some people who who believe that we have um, that we live in a world of, that is about karma, we attract situations to grow from. If if you believed in that, what would you say you've learned from each other? He makes me want to be a better person. I feel the same. You know, I feel the same. Yep, he, he makes me think. He makes me think good stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, w- what's interesting to me is the University of Virginia School of Perceptual Studies. They, they're they mostly pediatricians and they've done over 2,500 case studies of kids who remember their past lives. And the kids who were, who were huh. gay or weren't happy being with their particular gender they had previous lifetimes where they were that sex that they thought they should be um i wonder what if you've heard about that what you think about that if if i get reincarnated i hope i hope i'm gay again (laughs) i hope i'm a gay male because yeah no i'm happy being gay um i love guys and i love being a guy gail casey's got a let JJ out. Oh, okay. Here, hold. I'll hold, hold the phone. Okay. Don't hold your phone. But okay, let's, I got let's it. Show us JJ. Oh, there he is. I don't see him. Oh, JJ, come here. Come here, JJ. Oh, he's pretty. Yeah, but he's a good oh, boy. I'm in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, JJ. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah, he's beautiful. He's 12 years old. Or 10 he's years 10. old. He's 10. Here, let me turn the phone this way. Yeah. So you don't see Casey in his underwear. Okay. But they mm-hmm. look like shorts. So it's okay. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Let him out. Gail, where are you? In are you Chico? in Chico? Yeah. Are you in Chico? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, um, I, I think we've covered the waterfront. Is there anything that you would advise to a young couple that's getting married of whatever sexual orientation in terms of how to make their relationship a happy one like yours? What, what, what would you, you know? Uh, yeah, I would, I would just say, listen to each other, be patient and communicate. Get over the small stuff because it's the like small stuff. What about the small stuff, Casey? I said, uh, get over the small stuff because it's all small. It's all small stuff. Mm. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've I've been reading research about marriage, and John Gottman says that for many couples, the majority of their issues, their conflicts, aren't solvable. It's like one is religious and the other isn't or one wants to have kids and the other and there's you can't compromise on it 
So he said, you have to learn how to live with, with problems that, right. that aren't easily solved or can't yeah, be solved. We don't have a problem at all. Well, I, I, I think that my opinion is most couples issues are financial and thankfully we don't have that. I mean, both of us are very privileged. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. don't have the stress because stress can be we, undermined. Right. Relationship. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, anything else that you want to make sure people think about in terms of making a relationship work? Mm, no. No. Just, we love each other so much. Yeah. I mean, I'm a lucky guy. It's just getting over you know don't don't sweat stuff because yeah you know don't sweat the small stuff choose choose your mood <laughs> and mm. i choose to be happy mm. oh that's an interesting point right yeah. it's like the half the glass half empty or half full exactly so exactly you're, you're half full people I'm yeah, all, we are. I'm all the way full. <laughs> <laughs> full of it. <laughs> well, good. Thank you. I'm so glad we finally got to uh, meet. That. Thank you. Yeah. For same it. here. Yeah. Can we can we meet in person sometime? Wait. I'm gonna um and stop.